everyone. So we are at the end of our week-long um, unit on money. Let's just talk about some of the objectives we've already accomplished. We identified and counted bills. Remember that. Oops. Let's try that again. There we go. Think about those. You know what they all are. The bills are far easier than the coins because up in the left-hand corner of each one of these, you'll see the amount right on the front of the bill. The 20 is worth $20. The five is worth $5. If you have a 20 and a five, you just add those numbers up and you'll know it's $25. Our first day was dedicated to bills. Second day, little bit trickier, right? For a couple reasons. Coins change over time. They come out with new presidents, new fronts, new backs. That makes it challenging. Um, what's more is they don't put the number, the cent value on the front of these coins. They don't put it on the coins in any easy way for kids to find, to be honest. So you just kind of have to memorize or get used to finding these coins. The nice thing is these bottom two coins are relatively rare, right? This is a gold dollar, right? You might get that on a special occasion or something like that, but it's not commonly found in stores. This is a 50 cent piece. It's big, right? 50 cents for the 50 cent piece or half dollar. These four up on the top are the ones you probably should know pretty well. They're the ones that are used all the time. The penny, I think, is very easy. One cent. The nickel gets mixed up with the quarter a lot. It's smaller, though. It's worth five cents. This is Thomas Jefferson on the front of the nickel. Dimes are our smallest coin. They're worth 10 cents. And then a quarter, like a quarter dollar, is worth 25 cents. Those can be hard to count, so we just practice that song. 25, 50, 75, a dollar. Right? And it's good to just memorize that. It's going to save you a lot of time when you're counting coins. That was our second day. Then we moved on to counting up a total, right? So imagine they give us some bills and some coins. We're going to count those and then show them using dollars and cents. So I always start with the big stuff first. So when I do this, I know I have one, two, three dollars so i'm going to go ahead and put that right there and i have some cents now right remember how i said we were going to sing this we're going to sing it for three quarters here this is a quarter this is a quarter and this is a quarter so we're going to go 25 50 75. i could if i didn't know that i could add up the quarters on the side 50, and then he said another quarter. Oh, 75. Well, wait. 25, 50, 75. It's faster, and you're going to need quarters for your entire life. It's good to just sing it through. So I know that these three together are 75 cents. I'm going to jot that down just in case I forget. All right. So then I have a dime, and I know that's worth 10 cents. So that's going to change the value I have here. I don't have seven tens anymore. Now I have eight tens. So I have 85 cents now. There's my 85. Then I get another dime. So that's another change. 95 cents. Now I'm just going to hold that in my head and I'm going to go 96, 97, 98. Almost $4. I mean, I'm so close. $3 and 98 cents. That was our third day, writing dollars and cents, separating them with a decimal point and using a dollar sign. Then there was our last day. Um, I shouldn't really say this was the last day because we did have a couple days where we did some story problems. A little bit of lightning outside, a little bit of thunder. We did do some story problems or real life problems where we did all of these things. But um, the last other objective that we accomplished was 
using tables to compare dollars and cents. And they're kind of nice when you use tables because everything's separated and organized really well. You can see where you are gonna look first in the dollars box. And then you can use the cent box if the dollars don't help you decide. But most of the time, the dollars will do the work for you. I have $29 on this side. I have $32 on this side. Let's do a would you rather. Would you rather have $29 or would you rather have $30? Uh-huh. Yeah, this one is more. Woo. If it's more, you can use math words to describe that. You could say 29 is less than 32, right? Or you could go the other way and say 32 is greater than 29. You'd have to flip the symbol and move some numbers around, but using math words to describe how two different amounts compare. Now that you've done all of that, we're gonna take a review day just to kind of let everything digest, and then we're gonna take the test, okay? So today is the review day. Um, we're gonna do this review test mainly together. We're gonna focus on identifying bills and coins and adding dollars and cents using um, a dollar sign, a decimal point, and then seeing that you could change that into just cents if you wanted to, kind of like we did on the quick review. We might get done with about half of this page and then we have a couple of these problem solving pages that I blocked out all the amounts because we're really gonna understand these problems before we solve them. We're gonna model them off to the side and I'm super excited about that. So why don't we do this? I'll meet you back here at about one o'clock to work through some of these problems with you. If you can't make it, you can certainly work through these on your own and send them my way. If you have any questions, please reach out. I would love to answer anything you have, friends. Thanks for listening now. Bye.